Hello, Elise here from Miss McKenna's Life Leverage and today I'll be showing you my bullet journal setup for August. I've got a couple of new things to show you for this month so let's get stuck right in. I really want to stress how easy this theme is to create. It's so simple that as long as you can draw circles and straight lines this is totally doable for anyone. I've created a super short mini tutorial on how to draw these watermelons and I'll link that in the description below. However, if you'd rather just print them off and stick them into your planner, I've created some pictures that you'll see in a second and I've converted those into JPEGs which I've made available on my Patreon page for free. So these are the printables. Firstly, I have the main August page with lots of different melons. Then I've got a page of days of the week and a few noty thingies. <laughs> and finally, I've got my alpha blocks for this month's positivity process. And I'll show you how I'll be using these later on in the spread. I actually printed mine off like this onto sticker paper so that I can just cut them out and stick them straight into my planner. So I'll be using these throughout the spread this month. So as usual, I'm going to start with my title page for the month. And I decided to pick a watermelon theme because the last few months um, in my planner have been fairly sort of dark, muted colours. And I've been feeling a little bit down. Um, I've had to take some time off because the doctor's orders, <laughs> I've got to take six weeks off. So I've been feeling a little bit down. So I felt like I needed a bit of a change and something more bright and cheery. So I picked watermelon so that whenever I open my planner, I'm greeted with some bright colourful positive vibes. Don't worry, I'm, I'm not dying, I'm not really poorly, I'm just, I'm really tired and it's probably got something to do, uh, a combination of my fibromyalgia, my diet, which if you've been following me you know is absolutely awful, I am working on it, I'm just really struggling, so if anybody's got any tips to improve your diet, please help me <laughs> because I just can't seem to get the hang of it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I just have to take some rest and I was really hoping to have my Patreon page, you know, really fully up and running with all the content I wanted to share with you by the end of this month. But I'm going to have to take things a little bit slower. So I think I'll just have to trick all the content and get it out just as soon as I can, um, but not push myself too much. So please be patient with me. I know you're all really lovely, but, um, you know, I am sorry, but I am working working on it, I promise. For those of you that are new to my channel and have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm working on some videos that go deeply into healing from domestic abuse and I'm going to touch a little bit on my experience. But they're all about gaining knowledge that can help you understand and recover from your experience. And to be honest, after the first few videos, a lot of the things that we'll be focusing on learning are really helpful for anybody that struggles with confidence and assertiveness and just taking control of your own life. So I'll be updating this page every now and again with some of the content that I think will apply to pretty much anybody. But the bulk of it will be on my Patreon page, as I know that sort of content isn't what everyone is looking for. I'll leave a link to the page in the description, but like I say, it's pretty bare at the moment. It's literally in its brand new baby launching kind of stage, but I'm dedicated to following through with my promise to deliver. So there'll be new content op uh, bleh, uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> there'll be new content uploaded more regularly once I'm back to full health. So that's pretty much my finished title page for August and I'm going to move on to my main monthly spread now. I'm going to start using my stickers with this spread. I didn't use them on the first page because I do enjoy doing a bit of drawing and colouring and I like to be creative. I find it quite therapeutic so I only start using the stickers from now onwards. But I've kept my same sort of monthly layout as I usually do. I've just given myself a bit of extra... Uh, I'm not doing very well today. <laughs> I've given myself some extra space for some notes. Um, because I do find that the boxes, sometimes if I've got quite a heavy month, the boxes just aren't quite that big enough to fit everything in. So, uh, yeah, I've added some note space. I've only used three key colours in this spread to keep it nice and simple. 
I've used several brands of pens, which I'll link in the description below, but I've just stuck to three colours because I think it makes the spread look really fresh and clean and put together. I'm using my stickers here to cover up a, a sort of whoopsie mistake where the Tombow's sort of ghosted, if that's more than ghosting, that's that's really leaked through to the other side of the page when I was blending two two colours. This book's pretty good for ghosting, to be honest, but I think I just maybe got a little bit over-enthusiastic with the colour. Um, here you can see me having a battle with these stickers. I would say it might be easier to actually just print them on normal paper and stick them in with a glue stick or something because these are a right nightmare <laughs> to sort of come come apart and um that oval one my god it was like my nemesis but i i, I didn't let it beat me <laughs> i got it off um and so yeah like i say it might be easier just to stick them in with a glue stick um but i liked that the the sticker paper had a real sort of bright shine to it and the colors really popped I have actually added a little behind the scenes extra at the very end of this video so stay tuned till the end if you'd like to see that. So I'm just finishing this page up by adding a few more decorations. I have added sort of a border down the side, some seeds around the place and some coloured lines um, for the notes section. and. I filled the calendar out wrong. I was actually talking about this, about how annoying it is <laughs> when you fill out the calendar wrong and how frustrating it is. And then I went ahead and just uh, messed it right up. It gets to about the, the 29th, I think, and I sort of go, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Hey, what? Hey? And then I realized I missed out the Wednesday. And I was like, oh, damn it, I'll just, I'll fix it later. <laughs> so <laughs> I sort of gave up on that a little bit, um, but I do fix it later. I did actually make quite a few mistakes. I, it seems to be a recurring theme, actually. The more I watch these videos, I realise I do just make a lot of mistakes. Um, but before, it used to really annoy me, and now I'm starting to learn to just let it go. I think a lot of people, sort of, if they mess one page up or they get something not quite right, they kind of give up on their plan and think, oh, it's ugly or it's not perfect. And I was like that to start with. Um, but doing these videos and not being able to just throw out the, the journal and get a new one every time because I can't be showing you millions of different books it, it kind of forced me to get used to the fact that yeah I make mistakes and it really doesn't matter it really doesn't I think the more you make mistakes in the book the more it shows that you're human and if you can just sort of laugh at it and just say yeah I'm not perfect but I try my best and um you know, it, it all works out, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, the, the columns where I write the the uh, times down the right hand side of each of these columns, I put the, the line through it and had to tip X it out. And I was like, oh, damn it, I won't do that next time. But I did, <laughs> I did do it next time. So I had to tip X it out again, but I don't care. Like I say, it doesn't matter. Mistakes happen, get used to it. <laughs> so as usual, I've got my time log down the side, my food log, the very bottom box is for a mood log. I've got my notes and to do's in a separate section so that I don't get them mixed up. And then I've got my week to view overall at the top. Once again, I'm using the Dutch door method. If you don't know what this is or you just want to know how to create and use them, I have a three part video tutorial showing you how to create five different spreads in real time, which I'll link down in the description below. And then finally, I've got my mini, cal mini, mini calendar in the top right hand corner, uh, which just highlights the week that I'm in. One of the reasons I love the Dutch door sort of method is it's so customizable. You can really do anything you want with it and you can make them as complicated or as simple as you like. But I really like having the extra space to write in my dailies and just being able to fit everything on one page. Because when I do that, I do find that I use everything more consistently because it's right there in front of me, which is one of the reasons I cut. Uh, you'll see that I cut the whole of the bottom part throughout the weekly spreads so that I can see my mini habit tracker throughout the whole month because it's easier for me to quickly fill it in if I can see it and the other thing I do is make sure that my monthly is right at the beginning of my weeklies and my habit and fibro and mood tracker is right at the end 
of my weeklies so I only have to p flip one page to get to either so it's much quicker I don't have to go flipping through lots of pages so I find it just to be much more efficient and I just use it more because it's easier <laughs> and I can be a little bit lazy with my planning you know when things get a little bit too tough and I know lots of people miss days and they say oh how can I be more consistent with it and for me this is definitely one of the ways that helps me to keep consistent just an ease of use definitely makes a difference for me um, but also saying that I don't think it matters too much if you don't fill out every single day because it's supposed to be something that's fun and enjoyable for you not a chore um, and as long as it's keeping you productive it's doing its job and also if I do have blank spaces throughout my planner if I need to make extra notes or I just want to write a quote down or anything like that, something that just pops up throughout any other month, I'll just flip back to a space where I haven't filled something in and just put it in there so the space doesn't really get wasted. So while I'm just finishing off laying out my weekly spreads, I wanted to give you a quick update on the pattern changing domestic abuse course that I'm doing for those of you that have been avidly following. Last night I had my final session and it was so bittersweet. I'm so sad that it's ended, but I feel so empowered by what I've learned and I can't wait to continue gaining this sort of knowledge. But last night's final session really was lovely. It's amazing to see the changes in everybody because I did the course with nine other women who had all been in fairly similar situations or had struggled with being assertive and getting what they wanted and needed out of life. And even though we really differ in age and come from different backgrounds, we've definitely created a strong bond between us because we can all relate to how each other is feeling and understand why and how we've ended up in various difficult circumstances but to see how much each and every one of us has changed over the last 12 weeks has been incredible we've all come such a long way in our understanding of ourselves the things we need to work on and I'm truly astounded in how quickly we've been able to become more assertive and confident the techniques that we've been given are so simple and effective that we've all been able to put them into practice and start seeing immediate benefits. It just shows how powerful this information and knowledge is. We all agreed that this information and these techniques should be taught in schools as soon as possible because so many people can benefit from this information. It's relevant to almost everyone on one level or another. And I just feel like if only we'd known then what we know now, it could have saved us so much pain and suffering. But what's happened has happened, and I'm certainly learning to make peace with my own experiences. And I'm so excited about the future and the new experiences that I now know are possible. I've already seen a change in my current romantic relationship and even with friends and family so I'm incredibly grateful to the people that have made this course possible and I can't wait to share what I've learned with you all in more detail so that you can benefit too. As soon as I start getting that information out on my Patreon, I will let you know on YouTube. So like and subscribe, well you don't have to like, but subscribe if you um, want the updates on when it's all coming out. And it's a good idea to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So now we're on to my fibro and habit tracking. And on this spread, I've got all the habits that I either want to make sure I'm doing or just the things that I feel can have an impact on my mood or fibromyalgia so that I can work out if there are any patterns or correlations and adjust my habits accordingly. I've also got a section for how much sugar I'm eating because I know that has an effect on my mood and just my overall health and I want to make sure that I'm not having too much. I did have a phase this month where I was really good and cut down hugely on my sugar but it started to creep back up again so I know I need to work a little bit harder on that. I've also got a section for how much pain I'm experiencing each day, how tired I'm feeling and the yuck section is just a section for when I'm feeling poorly because I have phases where I suddenly start to feel really ill for no particular or apparent reason so I'm trying to work out what sets that off in the hope that I can reduce the frequency of these episodes and then finally I have my mood tracking at the bottom 
this type of spread spread <laughs> this type of spread could be adapted to any sort of medical condition whether mental or physical you would just tweak the kind of information you're tracking so i feel it's a really helpful addition to a planner the next page is a new spread i'm trying it's my monthly master to-do list and on the right hand side I split it up into the five weeks so that I'm not looking at a huge list of things to do and becoming overwhelmed by it. I've sectioned it off so that I'll know exactly what I'm tackling and how much I have to do each week which I'll then spread out over the days in my weekly spread and I'm hoping this will help give me a bit more structure to my month so that I can make some steady progress towards my goals. On the right hand page, I've given myself a mind mapping space and I'm going to use a sort of spider graph method so that I can list each task or goal and then break each subject down into smaller steps that I'll need to take. Because at the moment, I feel like I have so much to do and I have no idea where to start. So I think taking things step by step will help me to feel less overwhelmed by it all and consequently stop me from procrastinating because once I know exactly what I have to do I can just crack on with it. The next page is based on the same concept except that it focuses on basic needs. I really want to get better and recover as quickly as possible because I've got so much I want to achieve by the end of this year um, but I know I'm not the best at taking care of myself. Sometimes I'll start to feel really tired and low and I'm just not sure why and then one day my doctor said are you taking care of your basic needs and I thought oh no I'm not actually. I've been so busy thinking about all the big things I want to do that I've been forgetting the small day-to-day -day stuff that's just as important. So I've made this spread to help me define my basic needs and then I'll break those down into action steps. On the right hand page I've given myself a space for notes for anything that might occur to me while I'm doing this process, a space to list some habits that I'll need to start making that will help ensure I do these things every day and then an area for affirmations about anything concerning these topics. This sort of spread would be really helpful for anyone struggling with depression because if you're depressed it's very likely that you'll be neglecting your basic needs so doing something like this helps you to take really practical steps towards recovering. Now we're on to another new spread that I've titled Playlists, although it kind of looks like Playlifts <laughs> because the S has sort of turned out like an F. I'm still working on my sort of brush lettering. Anyway, I'm dedicating one side to songs that sort of <laughs> feeling a little melancholy. I know that's not spelt right. It was a play on the theme before. <laughs> Before I get loads of comments. Um, yeah, so I've got one side for sort of sad songs and then on the right hand side I've got a quote that says if life gives you melons you might be dyslexic because I wanted something sort of funny on the other side to show the contrast but I was a bit worried that it, uh, maybe it was a bit insulting to people with dyslexia so I rang my dad <laughs> because my dad's dyslexic and I said oh do you, do you think that's safe and he went yeah yeah it's great I've got loads of nicknames for it maybe you should he said well don't use one of them because that might seem like it's um disrespectful but my dad's great he sort of he gives it nicknames it's more like he's got a super I used to when I was little I used to think he had a superpower because he would say he was purple actic or he had schema scrabnophilian or, <laughs> or something like that so yeah so yeah anyway that's my playlist page so I've got a side for sad songs if I want a bit of comfort when I'm feeling blue and a side for happy songs if I want a musical pick-me-up this final spread is based on something I did in February and I picked what I call alpha blocks. I'll, um, if you haven't seen my February video, I'll link it in the description below because it will explain it all. Um, but I've picked some more words that I'm going to be journaling about throughout the month. I haven't given myself so many because I felt a little bit overwhelmed with having to do one every single day and then I get mad at myself <laughs> if I didn't fill it out. So this way it works out that I'm only doing one sort of every two days, so there's not so much pressure. I do this because it's I'm not very good at meditating because uh, my mind wants to be doing something all the time, but I do want to sort of po focus. 
ah, oh, today I do want to focus on sort of positive things. So I pick some really sort of nice words that particularly resonate with me, or if there's a particular subject that I want more clarity on, I'll pick words that go with that. But this month I just sort of picked words that I thought, yeah, I, I like the sound of those. I'm, I'm, I'd like to write a little bit about those. And it's like a meditation because I can sort of sit and focus my mind on something positive and just frame it in a way that really speaks to me so yeah if you if you struggle to uh, meditate this can be a, a nice way to combat that I've got quite a few different sort of processes I use with these alpha blocks um, all for different things depending on different subjects or what you're actually needing help with um, and I think I'll start putting more of these in these bullet journaling spreads so that you can have a look and see what I'm doing uh, because last time people were quite curious about it so I will try and get some more out for you. But I've I've really found that, you know, a lot of people that do the Miracle Morning and it says to script or write or do something like that in the mornings. This is really helpful with that sort of thing because it does give you some some prompts, as I suppose it would be, to, to help you get started. So I really love I love using the Alpha Blocks. They're just they're fantastic, <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> So that's pretty much the end of this video. But before I go, I just wanted to ask, I don't eat watermelon, ironically. I just I just don't like it. But I've heard that in America, you eat it with salt. Is that really a thing? Do you really eat it with salt? <laughs> so yeah, if you want to let me know, that'd be good because that doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> um, anyway, yes, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video because it really helps my channel out. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, so I'll leave links for those. I'll leave links to all the products I've used. Like I say, if you want to see the mini tutorial on how to draw the actual watermelons, I shall leave that in the description below as well. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye! Oops. This was a good idea in theory. I'll try you again in a minute. Come on, first time. Oh, I had it then. The rounded edges seem to be the hardest to get off. It, it's mocking me. Look at that smile. Ah. <laughs> I got it. I got it.